But I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Hallelujah. I get so fed up with hearing Christians bellyache about their problems instead of proclaiming the truth of who they have living in them. After Paul had prayed three times, God was fed up with hearing him bellyache. So he spoke to him, said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect. Anybody want perfect power? You know, a few years ago, there was, there was a terrible song, which we never sang in Kingdom Faith. More power. I thought, that's a terrible song. Why? Well, if you ask for more power, you don't believe what he's given you. I said, if you ask for more power, you don't believe what he's given you. I said, if you ask for more power, you don't believe what is inside you. Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. There is no greater power than the power of God himself. And he says that power is in you. What are you asking for more power for? Why don't you believe in the power you have? It's not your power, it's him. It's his power. You know, you can sort of lay hands tentatively on someone, oh, oh Lord, I hope this works. <laughs> In which case, it probably won't. You can say, well, this is bound to work because the Christ in me is gonna do it. I mean, there's no contest here because nothing can withstand the power of Christ. And if I'm reaching out in obedience to what the Spirit of God is telling me to do, then the power of Christ is going to come forth into that situation. Can anybody say amen? amen. we just got to do it, friends. Amen. I've been preaching this stuff for so many years. In this life of faith, God sort of brings people back. Truth is like, a, it's sort of encyclical really. God brings you back to truth again and again. It, it's, it's really like one of those old gramophone records, you know, we used to have in the days of old. <laughs> before iPods and all of that. But you know, every time the, the, the record came to where the needle was, can you remember that? Some of you weren't even born then, were you? No, no, no. <laughs> but every time it came round to the same place, it was a little bit nearer the center. And God brings us back sometimes to the same truth again and again, but every time it has a greater and greater impact, a deeper and deeper impact on our lives. But we have to step out in the obedience of faith. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God always work together. The Spirit of truth, the Word of truth. The Spirit guides us into all truth. So, this has wonderful ramifications. I mean, just think for a moment. Supposing you need healing. Where is the Christ who's going to heal you? You know, so many people pray, Lord, I don't know if you're there. I don't know if you're hearing me, but I hope you're out there somewhere. Lord, look, you, you know I need healing. And he says, hey, I'm here. I do know what you need because I'm living in you. Now, that must mean the healer is in me. I said, that must mean the healer is in me. And if the healer is in me, then my healing must be in me. I said, if the healer is in me, my healing must be in me. 
What do I need? I need the healing to be released through my life. Yes, through my body, through my emotions, through my relationships, whatever. That which is in me has to be released. So on the last great day of the feast, Jesus shouted, Come to me, all you who are thirsty. Come and drink. It's very easy to receive from God. You've just got to be thirsty and come and drink. But then Jesus said something interesting. Out of the belly of those who believe will flow rivers of living water. You see, it's easy to receive, but it's faith that releases the rivers. I said it's faith that releases the rivers. I said it's faith that releases the rivers. I said it's faith that releases the rivers. It's faith that releases the rivers. So we come back to the question that we started with. Do you believe? Not just do you believe that you have Christ in you. But do you believe that the Christ in you will be released through you? Because what he says is when you believe, that's what happens. You know, we can get all, oh, something's happening. Well, it's just because you've started to believe, that's all. <laughs> oh, God, it worked. Yeah, because you believe. How often did Jesus say, according to your faith, let it be done to you? Hello? I mean, why go searching for healing when you have the healer in you? Why well, think, well, well, will it happen if this one prays for me or, or that one prays for me or, or this anointed ministry comes along or, or that great man of God comes along or this woman of God faith comes and prays for me? No, 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 no. What about just trusting the one who is in you? I said, what about trusting the one who is in you? I said, what about trusting the one who is in you? I mean, he is the same, is he not? He hasn't gone to sleep. He's the one that says to you, wake up, rise and shine. When you shine, something comes out of you. The light that is in there shines out of you. The life that is in you pours out of you. The power that is there gets expressed through you. Listen, God hasn't brought you here so that a whole lot of miracles happen up the front. God has brought you here to enable you to become a miracle worker. God wants to show you what he can do through you. Not through someone else, but through you. Now, you haven't got anything else to do tonight, have you? So I can go on for another couple of hours, is that all right? You said so.